Hello, welcome to a new Plugin Guru video. My name is John Ho 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 Skippy Lim Cool. <laughs> welcome. So, today we're talking real time controllers. And I actually can do some fun things to figure this out. Hi! I got real time cameras. So I'm gonna zoom in so you can see. That kind of control. To do that, you need to send four controllers of information to your sequencer. How do you do that? Let's look at that. Let's, there's, there's all sorts of ways to do it. So let's see if I hit this button here. Hi, big me. Hey, so like this is a controller that you could look at. Korg makes controllers. This has these knobs on it. I don't recommend knobs for optimal use with a library like this. Uh, I find that something like these faders or real faders, this is a machine jam from Native Instruments. And uh, I found this used and it's great because you move the faders and you leave it, they stay there. Um, let me show you the editor software for this. Because what you need to do is whatever your hardware that you use, whether it's knobs or faders, whatever company it is, they all make software that calls up something like this, where you can double click and you can, this one's fairly complex because it can do pressure and all sorts of things, but we're only looking at position. And you have all of these different choices of what that fighter could do, right? Um, and so we just want it to be on Control change, CC. So CC number one is your modulation wheel, which is normally right here. I also have it here as a fader so I can control all four at the same time. So here is just a simple search for uh, MIDI continuous controller messages. And here's the list. There's 127 that are sent through a MIDI cable, whether it's a USB cable or a MIDI cable. This is part of the specs since the early days of MIDI, right? And so we've got CC1 is modulation, CC2 is breath controller. Um, we also are using CC4, which is foot controller, because a lot of keyboard controllers have a foot control input. If you plug into that and have a foot pedal that goes up and down, you can send variable data there. And then controller 67 is an on-off switch typically, but we're using it as a variable to uh, give you the range. So those are the four controllers. You can see one, two, four, 67. Set those up in your software editor for your hardware, or I'll show you in a second how you can set that up. I don't know about all sequencers, but Logic has an environment. Okay, so let me zoom in here. So you just see the desktop, and we're gonna go up here to the layer and say clicks and ports. And let me move this keyboard out of the way so it's a little bit out of the way so you don't see that. If you want in Logic, it's possible, you have to picture it like this. This is your MIDI input, all your keyboard controllers, all your things that are connected to Logic that it can listen to. And this cable that's going into the keyboard continues. So I play notes, you see the notes show up here. And the sequencer input is actually what it's listening to to record. And one of the cool things with the environment is that you can say new and you can say faders. Let's just say like vertical four. And you can click here to resize it and drag it over here. And this fader, if you want, you can take your sum, plug it into here. Now have this continue to the keyboard. And now it's part of the flow. And I could say, no, I don't want it to be uh, CC7. I want it to be CC1. And I want it to both listen and send on CC1. So now when I move my slider, if I come over here and check this out, uh, see right here, I'm moving this slider. It's also moving this slider inside of Logic. So I could grab this and automate just by going like this now without needing any hardware. And I could say, copy, paste, uh, don't replace and Take this one and instead of CC1, say CC2. And as you can see in the list, it says breath and paste, don't replace. And say, I want this one to be CC4, 
cc4 and paste and don't replace and come back over here please and have this one be uh, cc67 so go down the list until you see 67 and it says soft pedal so those are the controls now you will notice I've done this work I move all the faders only one is working right see that that's because <laughs> I haven't connected it to the other ones yet. So you got to take this cable, go into here. Let's see. Let's move this keyboard up some so we see that it shouldn't have anything connected to it yet. So let's do, oh wait. Let's see if we just select here, we can cut the cable. We don't want any of those cables connected there. We're going to say from here into here, into here, into here, and now into the keyboard. There. And now as I move all faders, hey, they work. And then you can clean this up. You can make it so it's a smaller view. And you could say hide cables, protect cable positions, don't see cables. And now it's all nice and clean. And you could get this set like how you want and even make this part disappear. And uh, have yourself your own really cool little keyboard controller input. You could build on this i mean people have like made entire interfaces to control hardware synthesizers using the environment of logic it's very powerful so now now if i play a note and instead i come up here it's the same thing but now that it's a mouse controlling each part, you notice I can't go wow, vroom. I can't have all four come down at once. That kind of action. If you want to record this, you're gonna to have to record it in four passes like this, two, three, four. Right? So that's one pass, and I can quantize this, and then I can say measure one, and I don't have to play again, but. I gotta remember my moves, right? Okay, measure one, repeat it again. Right? One more time. But I have independent control over each one. That's, that's the whole fun of this with real-time controls and having four elements in the sound instead of just one is that the, the door is wide open for all sorts of things to happen. So I hope that helps. It's just the idea that you need controllers and Anything that you have that has knobs or faders can work. You need to go into the settings and find the CC and the controller number that it's sending on. And from there, it should just be able to be recorded into your sequencer. And if not, like I showed you, you can use the environment. Let's go into the MIDI environment. I then go over here. Once again, I'll just show you the steps. Go to mixer, say uh, click and ports. And here's where you see the physical input and you have a cable and you can disconnect that cable and then reconnect it to faders. And you want to choose, in this case, vertical faders. There's a whole bunch of different kinds of faders. There's different kinds of knobs. They even have buttons. I mean, it gets very crazy. So happy holidays. Enjoy Airwave 3. It is by far the most aggressive, crazy, encompassing library of dance sounds like this that we've released before. So I hope you enjoy it. And thank you for your support. We'll see you soon. Bye.